Mechanical engineering is one of the oldest and perhaps the most generic branch of engineering. The broad nature of mechanical engineering makes it a very demanding major because it requires students to develop a working knowledge and skill set spanning so many areas from design and manufacturing to materials to fluid and thermodynamics. Because it's so broad, many schools give students the option to concentrate or specialize in a specific area of mechanical engineering. So you might be wondering, is it better to concentrate in a specific area of mechanical engineering or become an expert? expert in as many areas as humanly possible? Well, the short answer is it's definitely beneficial to focus on becoming an expert in one specialized area. But before you can do that, you have to explore all of the different branches of mechanical engineering and determine what exactly you like. A lot of students, including my former self, have a hard time deciding on an area of interest just because mechanical engineering is so general and schools don't really give us the proper guidance. You could also be someone who knows that you would like to work in say the medical or aerospace industry and design a certain product like the intuitive da Vinci surgical robot or a Boeing 747 aircraft. Whatever the case may be, you wanna pick an area that has a bright future and that you are passionate about. In this video, I'll introduce the seven areas of mechanical engineering that you can't go wrong with, the knowledge and skills that you should focus on developing for each specialization, and the different types of work you can do after graduation. Number one is mechatronics or one of its subfields, robotics. Mechatronics is currently one of the best specializations of mechanical engineering out there right now. It combines mechanical, electrical, and software engineering knowledge to design and develop electromechanical systems using autonomous vehicles and different types of robots like the Intuitive Da Vinci XI Surgical Robot, Amazon Warehouse Robot, and Spot, the robot designed by Boston Dynamics. Mechatronics engineers can also build programmable logic controllers used to control manufacturing processes. Automated systems comprise of motors, microcontrollers, sensors, and gearboxes to test products and a whole lot more. Keep in mind that most schools in the US don't offer an undergraduate mechatronics engineering program. So you have two options if you're studying in the US. You could either major in mechanical or electrical engineering and then specialize in mechatronics engineering for grad school. If you don't plan on going to grad school, you can take a mix of mechanical, electrical, and computer science classes as well as get an internship and do a senior project related to mechatronics. Some essential knowledge and skills that mechatronics engineers need to know include computer-aided design, materials, finite element analysis, designing and building circuits, different types of control systems, sensors and motors, writing and debugging code using Python or C++, and graphical programming languages such as LabVIEW or Simulink. As a mechatronics engineer, you can work in essentially any industry, but expect every mechatronics job to be different. For example, one job could be 80% mechanical design and 20% software development. Another job could focus on 30% mechanical design, 40% electronic circuit control system design, and 30% microcontroller programming using LabVIEW. Mechatronics engineers are in very high demand because employers realize that most mechanical engineers don't know jack about electrical engineering and vice versa. This makes engineering teams unnecessarily large and products suffer because each design team tries to solve problems within their own skill sets rather than taking a systems approach that mechatronics engineers bring to the table. You can think of mechatronics engineers as a jack of all trades and a general purpose engineer. To learn a little bit more about mechatronics engineering, check out my video here. Number two is manufacturing. This is another exceptional specialization of mechanical engineering. Every product from canned fruit to mobile phones to cars to aircraft starts out as raw materials such as metals, polymers, and plastics that go through a series of value added processes before being sold. Manufacturing engineers work on designing, implementing, troubleshooting, controlling, and improving manufacturing processes used to bring a mechanical engineer's design to life based on engineering drawings as efficiently, cheaply, accurately, and sustainably as possible. Processes include but are not limited to CNC machining, casting, plastic injection molding, 
forming, joining, 3D printing, surface treatments, assembly, and packaging. They will also determine what types and how many machines will be needed and where they will be placed, as well as what tooling and fixtures will be required. Some important knowledge and skills that manufacturing engineers need to know include computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing, materials, statistical process control, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, failure modes and effects analysis, design for manufacture and assembly, gauge repeatability and reproducibility, root cause analysis, polka yoke, lean manufacturing methods, and DMAIC. Manufacturing engineers can work in literally any industry, and there are endless amount of things you can do after graduation. Some roles will be more technical and focus on process design or making product designs manufacturable, while other roles will be more people and management oriented that focus on working with plant managers, machinists, technicians, and operators. Number three is nanotechnology. This is a relatively new field that's still in its infancy and deals with manipulating matter on an atomic and molecular scale as small as a millionth of a millimeter for industrial purposes. Nano engineers, as it relates to mechanical engineering, seek to understand the behavior of materials at atomic levels and develop microelectrical mechanical devices and systems, or MEMS, as well as applications in photonics and fiber optic communication. Some real world applications include sunscreen containing nanoparticles that block UV radiation, alien tape, solar cells, inkjet printers, digital micro mirror devices using RGB laser projectors, micro valves used to propel satellites, and accelerometers used in cars and gaming controllers. Now, very few schools in the US, the most notable being University of California, San Diego, offer an undergrad program in nanotechnology. Even though this subfield has a lot of potential, I would advise against pursuing this as a major in undergrad because there are very few related jobs on the market right now. The majority of jobs that are available right now are research oriented and require a PhD degree. So if you do want to get into nanotechnology, I recommend getting a bachelor's degree in mechanical, chemical, or materials engineering and take some nanotech electives, which will give you more flexibility down the road. If you do decide that nanotechnology is right for you, you can then get a postgraduate degree in nanotechnology. Important knowledge and skills that nano engineers need to have include chemistry, material science, optics, and a programming language such as Python. Industries that nano engineers can work in include materials, semiconductor, medical, food, agriculture, and energy. Number four is energy technologies and sustainability. This is also a very hot specialization at the moment that seeks to understand the environmental impacts of different types of renewable and clean energy and to provide solutions to environmental challenges like air pollution and deforestation, the two main contributors to climate change. Some examples include designing cheaper and more efficient fuel and battery cells, solar cells, wind turbines, developing sustainable methods for managing waste such as car tires and batteries and coming up with innovative technologies that can harness the kinetic energy produced by ocean waves and tides. Keep in mind that many universities in the U.S. offer an undergrad program in environmental engineering, usually within the school or department of civil engineering. I want to stress that this isn't the same as studying mechanical engineering and then concentrating in energy technologies and sustainability. Environmental engineers focus more on soil studies, drainage design, wastewater and solid waste management, and water conservation, while mechanical engineers work on clean and renewable energy, green technologies, and sustainable energy storage. So definitely keep this in mind when selecting your major. Even if you are thinking about studying environmental engineering, I still strongly recommend that you pursue mechanical engineering in undergrad just because it's so general and it provides a big safety net in the event that your interests change. Poor knowledge and skills that are good to have for this specialization include energy policy, optical, electrical, and energy modeling, thermodynamics, fluid dynamics, computer-aided design, materials, and circuits. Number five are aerospace and automotive engineering. I group these together because they are two very important and specific subfields of mechanical engineering. I won't go into too much detail here because they're pretty self-explanatory. 
As the names imply, aerospace engineers work on the design, optimization, and manufacture of aircraft, spacecraft, and defense systems, while automotive engineers focus on the design, optimization, and manufacture of cars, commercial vehicles, and motorbikes. Some schools do offer undergrad degrees in aerospace and automotive engineering, but I would avoid going down this road and just go for a general mechanical engineering degree. You can concentrate in either of the two during your junior year of university, or if you haven't made up your mind by then, you can work in industry for several years and then decide if you wanna pursue a master's degree in aerospace or automotive engineering. Both aerospace and automotive engineers need to have a good understanding of fluid dynamics, which includes aerodynamics, thermodynamics, materials, control systems, computer-aided design, particularly advanced surface modeling, and simulation tools like finite element analysis and computational fluid dynamics software. The type of work you do will vary from company to company and can consist of a mix of design, simulation, manufacturing, and testing. Aerospace engineers can work on things like an aircraft's landing gear, wings, and engine ignition or cooling systems, while automotive engineers can work on a car's engine, body in white, fuel system, ignition system, and drivetrain. Number six is computational engineering. This is also a fairly new and popular subfield of mechanical engineering that uses mathematical models and algorithms to describe and predict complex real world phenomena and to solve physical problems using high performance computers. Finite element analysis or FEA software used to model solids, computational fluid dynamics or CFD software used to model fluids, and multi-physics software used to model the interactions between multiple physical phenomena are all leveraging computational models behind the scenes. Very few schools offer an undergraduate program in computational engineering, but there are a good number that do offer a concentration. As a computational engineer, you will be able to work in virtually any industry, but keep in mind that most of the jobs will require a master's or PhD degree because of the advanced math, physics, and engineering concepts involved. You'll need to have a working knowledge of differential equations, programming, physics, numerical analysis, different simulation software like ANSYS, Abacus, NASTRAN, and Hyperworks, as well as mechanical engineering theory like solid and fluid mechanics and materials. Depending on the industry you work in, there will always be unique, complex problems for you to model and solve, whether that's improving the crashworthiness of a Tesla Model Y or the fuel efficiency of a Rolls-Royce jet engine. To learn a little bit more about computational engineering, go ahead and check out my video here. Obviously, there are additional subfields and concentrations for mechanical engineering, but these are the ones that have the greatest potential for growth. Now, if I had to rank these six concentrations in order of job flexibility and security, manufacturing and mechatronics would be at the top of the list, followed by aerospace, automotive, and energy, and lastly, nanotechnology. I'll end by saying don't stress too much over which area of mechanical engineering to concentrate in. It's not mandatory. Instead, try to learn as much as you can about the different concentrations and see if there's a particular one that you're interested in. Okay guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.